If you've been paying attention, you know that next to releasing Menix 9.13, we also released Menix 9.12. The reason I mentioned a previous version is because Menix 9.12 is a medium term support release, or MTS for short. Menix provides updates and fixes to MTS releases until the next long term support version, or LTS, is released. So in this video, I will cover updates for both 9.12 and 9.13. If you frequent the forum, you'll have noticed that we've made some changes. You can now easily find your own activity with the menu on the left, like questions you've asked, the ones you've answered, and which ones you've commented on. You can also find an overview of your bookmarked questions. We've also moved the filters to the top of the questions page, so you can more easily find the questions and answers you're looking for. Keep an eye on the navigation menu on the left because we'll be adding new features in the coming months. On top of all that, you can now visit the forum on your tablet and your phone, simply to make the experience of finding answers that much easier. Let us know what you think of these forum updates on the community Slack or by sending us an email at community.mendix.com. Scheduled events received some changes both under the hood and in their options. Under the hood, scheduled events are now executed through a task queue, which means scheduled events can now be picked up by any node in the cluster. This also increases the reliability of your events in case of sudden downtime, because the scheduled tasks will be picked up as soon as your app is up and running again. In a clustered environment, the tasks will just be executed on another node if the cluster leader is down. On the user interface, you might notice new options for the different interval types. Based on the interval type, you get more advanced options, such as a specific weekday for a monthly event, or planning an hourly event with an offset of 45 minutes. We've also improved the preview information, like which months your events will be executed in, and what will happen to an event scheduled for the 31st of February. This will help you pick the schedule you want without being surprised by edge cases, like daylight saving times. Oh, and yearly and monthly are now truly what they claim to be, instead of 365 or 31 days. You can now use new date tokens in your expressions. You already had tokens to compare dates against today using begin of current date time and end of current date time. And we've extended the expression language in both Studio and Studio Pro with four new tokens, all to make it easy to evaluate against yesterday or tomorrow. The new tokens are begin of yesterday, end of yesterday, begin of tomorrow, and end of tomorrow. Happy comparing. Who doesn't love a good gradient? I do. I mix all the things. That's why I love the release of a new background gradient widget specifically made to add an extra bit of polish to your apps. You can easily configure the start and end colors and even add multiple colors. And as if that wasn't enough, you can add angles and a click event. Ah, it's like playing around with word art all over again. If it hurts your eyes, you succeeded. Workflow has been available in Studio Pro for a while now, and Studio users will be pleased to hear that they can now also use Workflow. For example, you can now build an approval workflow using a spreadsheet and data hub data in just five minutes. Try it out and let us know what you think. And that's it for this release. For a full list of new features, improvements, and fixes, check out the release blog on mendix.com slash blog or read the release notes on docs.mendix.com. Download Studio Pro 9.13 at marketplace.mendix.com to use all these new features right now. If you enjoyed this video, I hope we've earned your like and subscribe. I'm Jan de Vries, your logout host. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.